G'day guys and welcome to the Dreams Into Success podcast. My name's Chris Goodrope and today I've got the pleasure of interviewing my dad, Alan Goodrope, a uh, Victorian state titles champion, an Australian national champion, Australian Olympian, the 1976 Montreal Olympic Games, a business owner and now enjoying retirement. Dad, welcome. Thanks for having me, Chris. Uh, it's a pleasure. Um, I suppose I just want to begin by just asking how, how did you get into the sport of cycling? Um, I first started off at school. Um, they had a notice on the school board for uh, schoolboy cycling and um, they had uh, events called um, Australian Schoolboys Championship. So I entered that and um, uh, I, f- I got a second in a, fi- in a zone final and a third, but I never ever made the, the final of the schoolboys championships. Okay, so obviously you got, um, you obviously enjoyed, you enjoyed your cycling. And yeah, I loved it. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, something that I'd like to like doing and uh, keeps you fit and healthy. Yeah. And I suppose the progression from those second and thirds in those zone finals, how did it then progress? Like, oh, the- well, after that, I, they had a, um, uh, notice on the notice board at school if anybody wants to join a club and I joined Fitzroy. Um, and then we used to race every Saturday afternoon at two o'clock. A lot of our races would be up uh, up towards Epping and Yan Yin. And uh, uh, that's how I started and uh, I kept on going, yeah. Good, good. And I suppose, um, was it... Once you got into the sport, you knew, you knew knew about it. You're enjoying it. You're doing well. Um, did your dream then become to be a state champion or the Olympic Games? Uh, what was your dream? No, I, I didn't really have a dream. A dream. I uh, I enjoyed the the bikes as I went along as I got a bit older, and um, I was reasonably good as a what they call a sub junior under sixteen. Um, won a fair few races, then you go up to a junior, which is 16 to 18, and I kept riding and um, I rode in what they call open races. That's all clubs in Victoria have a, uh, a meeting every, every month or every fortnight. So uh, progressed to there and, um, uh, yeah, I, I went pretty well, yeah. Oh, good, good. And I suppose, um, yeah, moving through those stages, it's, you, you obviously became successful at a, at a very young age. Was there any um, pressure from the family or your friends to do well at these uh, events? Or? No, no pressure at all. I was just um, something that I liked doing and uh, um, I made a few friends and went out training on weekends with them and... Uh, yeah, it was uh, it got pretty competitive before I was, oh, I guess before I was uh, twenty, and um, I had a go at a few selection races for Australian titles, and um, I missed out on a couple of uh, selections where I was named uh, emergency a few times. Um, How that, old were you at that stage? Uh, I was probably about. 17, 18, that time. So that was that for the state team? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Victoria's always been known to be the hardest to make their team. So yeah. it was a battle. Yeah. So you had you obviously missed out on the state team or the, the open state team that was? Yeah, out yeah. of, yeah. Yeah, that, so uh, that was the open state team as a 17-year-old. You missed out. Mm-hmm. Um, what then, I suppose, gave you that motivation and... Determination um, oh, to give up. I, I just enjoyed the cycling, and um, we had a few uh, few races, um, like in New South Wales, the Grafton Inverell, where I was, that was about 142 mile in those days, and uh, I think I was about 18, 17, 18, and uh, I, will, I finished sixth in that, and that's classed as equal to the Melbourne to Warrnambool, so. And uh, to finish sixth and be the youngest to finish was uh, pretty pleasing. Yeah. Oh, mm. absolutely. Absolutely it was. 
So take us, uh, I'm going to jump ahead now. So, so take us back to um, the 1976 Montreal Olympic Games. Mm-hmm. Um, how did the selection process go? Like what was the race like? Uh, and then, that, yeah. And then I suppose further than that, what was the experience like at, at the Games? Uh, yeah, well, it was, uh, as I say, it's always hard to get into a, a Victorian team and uh, – I, I, um, I did stop riding for a while, um, probably when I was about 20, I stopped riding for maybe 12 months. And when what I, was that? Oh, well, I just sort of uh, met mum and uh, uh, you sort of, you know, when you've got a girlfriend and that, you sort of, you know, got other interests and... Where did you meet Mum? Uh, I met Mum at the Heidelberg Town Hall. Okay. Yeah. Disco. Something like that, yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, I stopped riding around about the age of 20, I suppose, which was pretty young. And uh, I was married at 21. And um, I thought after I got married, I thought I wouldn't mind getting on the bike again. So... After two years really off the bike, I started training and um, rode in a few, uh, uh, a couple of Tassie tours, which are pretty tough, um, and uh, three New Zealand tours, and they're they're tough also. Um, But I did pretty well in the first one, 1971. I finished fourth, only uh, a minute and three seconds behind the leader, and... uh, I thought, oh, well, let's... Uh, How far was that race? Oh, I forget. It's probably an average... It could be about 1,200 miles back in those days, right. over seven days. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so I knew I had the confidence because I knew I could match it with the the big boy. So uh, I gained a lot of confidence riding that. And, um, yeah, I kept on... Uh, when I got back home, I kept on racing and... Um, to jump to a, a, a few years, I, I rode it again in 1975. I knew I had to ride that tour to be, because we had our selection races for the Montreal Games um, after Christmas. So uh, I knew if I rode the tour in November, I'd have uh, plenty of fitness behind me. So uh, yeah, uh, I did that and... Um, uh, I rode the selection races and... Uh, Where were the selection races held? Uh, one was down near... One was up at Greenvale, which is pretty tough, and the other one was down at um, uh, Druin, and that was also hard. Uh, anyway, I finished... I think I got a fourth in the selection race and I, I did win one of them. So... Uh, that more or less cemented me for, uh, you know, to be in the state team. So, uh, yeah, I got picked. There was six of us that got picked. So, sorry, was that the state team or the that, national no, team? No, that, the... that was a state team to ride the national right. titles, yeah. Okay, and then when were the national titles held? Uh, they were in about, um, oh... The Olympic year, was it? Yeah, 76? it was around about March they were, and one was down near Warrigal, and I think I finished about sixth in that one. It wasn't my best ride, but uh, uh, they only had one, and uh, I thought, oh, it's going to be pretty tough to get in the team. So they had the other one around. Uh, they had that selection race and the Australian title around the Botanical Gardens, and it was uh, 42 times up Anderson Street. Um, Jeez. So that was pretty tough. And how did you how did you go with that one? Uh, I finished fourth. Finished fourth. So that more or less uh, put me in the Olympic team. So yeah. Yeah. And how was that feeling after finishing fourth and sort of knowing that you're going to go to the Olympic Games? Good. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, it's a great what a great feeling, Dad. You're getting a bit emotional. It obviously meant a lot to you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Um, I suppose um, 
leading on from that and, and getting to the Olympic Games, what, what was the that experience like, getting on the flight? and um, Yeah, good. With all the team, you know, felt you've... Uh, getting earned, the uniform. Earned your spot and, uh, yeah, great experience. Yeah. I'm probably retired too early after that, though, at the age of 28, you know. Yeah. I could have went on for another four years, but, um, you know, you had home commitments and that and uh, yeah. you had to keep working to... Uh, Support the family and all that sort of stuff. Oh, absolutely. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, what was the, I suppose, just sticking to your cycling for now, what was your your toughest ride that you've experienced? Um, uh, oh, probably the, um, might have been the Tour of Quebec. We had a tour before Olympic Games. That was pretty tough because all the Olympic riders were there, you know. Yeah. I finished 10th uh, in one stage and... I was the first Australian, so yeah, it was pretty tough. Yeah, oh, good, good. Um, one last question, Dad, on cycling before we move on to your transition out of the sport. But you were often crowned um, the king of the mountains, and you always were always in the leaders' jersey. You tell me why? Why were you so good on the hills? Um, I just liked them, you know. The I liked the uh, the pressure, the the hard. Hills, the harder it was, the more I liked it. Yeah, yeah. So I was, uh, yeah, one king of the mountains in the Tassie Tour and in the uh, New Zealand Tour. Some big hills over there. Yeah, yeah. So that was good. Yeah, I suppose uh, just you know, I've probably even told you this before, but it, whenever I'm on a run or whenever I'm trying to get up a hill, I think of you trying, mm. <laughs> trying to get up the hill because it's obviously yeah. bloody tough. Yeah, you did it tough. So um, no, well done. Yeah, well, I always thought if it's hurting me, it's got to be hurting them. So, and the harder I went, the the better I got. I think. Yeah. So it was all in the mind. Mind plays a lot. Yeah. Yeah. What was the? I mean, I know these days they've got all the professional bikes, the light frames, the you know those little um, nutrition yeah. bars and things. Yeah. What, what did you have to keep you going? Oh, that? oh. maybe uh, stamina. I used to carry me bidden. And back in my days, you'd probably eat uh, steak you couldn't eat because it takes too long to digest. You had a lot of pasta, and that sort of you get a lot of energy from that as so well. You before know, before the race, and what about during the race? What are you What are you eating oh, or drinking? A lot or? of a lot of uh, rice cake was good. That gives you a lot of strength. Honey, sausagean that was a good uh, good liquid meal in its own. That sort of Got you through as well, you know. Yeah. But uh, glucose tablets, all those sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that was. And you've often said that you drink Coke as oh, well. Is yeah, that right? yeah. Used to have a Coke on the real hot days. Just a, a can would be enough, you know. But you can't drink too much of that. But uh, just enough to put a bit of energy in me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. A bit different now. I don't think you see them drinking cokes, would they? Would you? Uh, a lot of the pros do overseas after do after a finish. Yeah. When it's really hot, they might have half a can of coke. You Just know? to replace those sugar levels. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Dad, the transition out of I suppose I call it professional sport, but it wasn't a full time job back then, was it? You know, no, like you... it's a really amateur back in those days. You didn't earn any money. It was just the honour and glory of it. You know. Yeah. So you really satisfaction. Did it for the love and the satisfaction of the yeah, sport. Yeah, yep. So what did you move on to do then? You went and became a, a butcher, is that right? Yeah, I'm a butcher by trade and um, I worked when I retired in at 28, I think it was about 1980. Um, worked as a butcher and um, then I, uh, my brother uh, wanted to sell his shop, butcher shop in Watsonia, so uh, I thought oh, I'll take the plunge and... Uh, so I thought, oh, well, it's better to buy that business, the one uh, that I know that's fair income. And, uh, yeah, so I bought the shop and um, worked for about nine years in it and uh, put the kids through school and that's, yeah. yeah. No, very lucky to go to a, a private school and, and obviously um, I know you and Mum worked really hard to get us there. Was there anything that you, you learnt? from your cycling days, mm. so um, whatever it may be and your determination oh. or anything like that, that you could that you, you took across to the to the butcher industry yeah, and had well, your own business? 
because you're under a lot of pressure in the cycle, in the discipline that you have to go through and, you know, eat right, not go out, get plenty of sleep. It's, uh, it's sort of full time really, you know, nothing sort of, you either got to do it or you don't and uh, I took that across to the uh, butcher shop so uh, that was, um, uh, that reflected a lot, you know, the, uh, you know, how tough things are. You sort of related back to how you used to ride the bikes and, um, yeah, yeah. No, it's worked well. Uh, very good. Good grounding. Yeah, absolutely. And it, I think, um, you know, it obviously you had this determination when you were riding and I think that clearly transferred across to, you know, when you were running your own business and, and in an industry that probably not too many People want to get into the butcher industry. Ah, uh, well, it's uh, long hours. It's up at four o'clock every day, and you don't get home till half past six of a night. And I'd go in on a weekend on a Sunday and uh, get ready for Monday. You know, so uh, I did that for about not well nine years. And in that time, I think I had about maybe six weeks off in that nine years. You know, so yeah, jeez. Not much of a break, but was is there anything you miss about it? Like obviously not the long hours, but is there anything you miss about it? Like the no, oh, not really. And no, it's no. all changed now, so I'm I'm happy to be out of it and uh, yeah. enjoying my retirement. Yeah, yeah. You did enjoy the the customers though, didn't you? Like how much oh yeah, that was nice to talk to the regulars and uh, their families when they come in and yeah have a chat with them. Yeah, no, yeah. that was good too. Oh, good. Well, obviously, I didn't ever see you. Right, but mm. I suppose something that I have a few fond memories of, um, and even though we all probably thought you were a bit crazy at the time, but you can you tell the story how you rode your bike um, in the middle of summer, mind you, which is, you know, start of January. Um, you rode your bike from Greensboro, Eltham area to uh, Achuco, Moama. And oh, yeah. Just, uh, just before you tell that story, I've done a... Bit of did a bit of a search on Google Maps. Mm-hmm. It says it's two hundred and five kilometres by bike, or ten hours and twenty eight minutes. No, what, well, well, that's what it says on Google Maps. So, yeah. so why would you want to do something like that? Oh, just a, um, I suppose it's just a bit of a challenge I like to do. You know, uh, I've probably done it about three times. I think I was going to say it's you haven't did it, I've written down you haven't done it just once but you've done it three times. I have, yeah, yeah. One year it was uh, a pretty headwind and it took me over seven hours, um, and one year I think I did it in about six hours and forty minutes. So I had a tail wind that year, but uh, it's. Uh, yeah, it, it's a good ride. It's not a hard ride. Once you get past Kilmore and that, it's pretty flat. <laughs> not a hard ride, six and no. a half hours on a bike. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, – um, yeah, I enjoyed it, you know, but uh, you probably wouldn't do it these days because it's too dangerous, you know. Yeah. And pretty it, risky. Tell me what was going through your mind during that stage. Like, did you have any doubts at all or how do you keep pushing your body or pushing your mind – do you, oh. do you have to set yourself a goal for the next next like sort of ten minute? You know. Sort yeah, of I did. Oh, yeah, or? I just sort of got to one town. I said, "Oh well, he's gets the first real one." So then uh, you get to uh, Rochester, then then Elmore, and uh, before you know it, you're at uh, Ichuka. You know, so you just sort of um, you know just uh, pace yourself, and don't overdo it. You know, and you get there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very good. And I suppose, I mean, this year now, 2020 was meant to be um, an Olympic game year in, in Tokyo and it's mm-hmm. obviously been pushed back until next year now um, mm-hmm. and just sticking to those fond memories that I've got. It was, can you believe that it's been 20 years ago since you um, carried the Olympic torch yeah, um, yeah. In, the, in the lead up to the Sydney Olympic Games? Can you Can you... Take us through those feelings, what it was like. Did it yeah, bring that, back memories that, of your time? And Well, I wasn't going to do it, but uh, my brother rang me up one day and uh, John and uh, said, oh, you're mad if you don't do it. So um, mum got on the phone and rang him up and uh, I think I was a late entry. So, uh, uh, yeah, it was good, very pleasing to do that with all the family there. Yeah, it was good. I remember. And, and my mum was there, yeah. 
all um, former Australian Olympians. So the AOC, the Australian Olympic Committee, reached out to all Olympians to ask if you wanted to be part of the relay and you didn't really want to do it. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. 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 But no, probably just me. Yeah. How shy I am, I suppose. Yeah. But you're glad you've yeah great memories. Yeah, I'm glad. It's a good memory, yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. For Maddie and I as well, um, you know, we loved running next to you that day. It was a great memory and obviously downstairs you've got the torch and a frame and everything like that. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, it's a pretty cold day though, wasn't it? It was. It was a bloody cold day up there. Yeah. Where was it? Again. Yeah, up at um, Kalarama, up up in the Dandenongs. Yeah. Dandenongs, yeah. 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 Um, I suppose um, that, uh, you know, moving on from that is – what what would be your now that you're in retirement, you're enjoying retirement, you're, you're potting around the house. Are you still ride? Are you still riding at all? Yeah, I, I try and get out three or four times a week, weather permitting, and uh, meet a couple of mates and uh, go and do our sixty k and have a coffee and uh, and ride home. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy that. Yeah, would you say that cycling's always been your escape or your something that you've just loved doing? Oh it yeah, well? it's. Uh, yeah, it's sort of an escape and uh, uh, I don't know what I'd do without it really, you know. Yeah. I've uh, done it all my life really, you it's know. It's funny that you just saw that notice on the school board at, at school. Yeah, and that's yeah. How you, st- you didn't even know you liked it. Yeah, like it. although when we when I was very young, when I was about seven or eight, we, we used to live in Coburg and uh, our street ran parallel right up to the bike track, so... I mean, I didn't start there, but I, I knew a lot of people that rode around the track. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, what would be uh, what would be three pieces of advice that you would pass on to anyone wanting to follow their dreams and, and, and strive for success? I know you said cycling wasn't quite what your dream was, but you obviously loved it and had a lot of success in it, but... What would be three pieces of advice that you would um, pass on to someone wanting to follow their dreams? What would they need to do? Oh, well, they, you've got to be committed to do it and have the willpower to sort of focus on your goal and uh, um, it's got to be, you know, if you want to aim for a Commonwealth Olympic Games, you've got to, um, as I say, commit and and uh, do everything right. Um, don't let anything get in the way. If you got the uh, um, talent, although I didn't think I had the talent, it was a lot of hard work. So, uh, yeah, it's hard work and I think uh, it pays off in the end. You, you get a, li- a lot of knockbacks along the road, but you you just got to keep fighting. So, uh, yeah, yeah you got to have that fighting spirit all the time to... Uh, you got to get to where you have to go. Yeah, yeah I love it. I love it. Um, and I suppose, um, you know, leading on to the last couple of questions is, um, you know, what's your what 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 brings you happiness now? Um, well, um, uh, keep on riding the bikes and uh, have the family around me. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. And final question: uh, what what what's your definition of success? Um, well, hard work, I, I reckon, hard work and, and be committed to whatever you do, whether it's sport or your job, um, you know, you, you, you haven't got a long time to uh, go for your goals because I think when, once you get past the, you know, the, the 30 or, I mean, in sport for a 30-year-old, you sort of... You know, thirty to thirty-five, and you're at your peak. So, yeah. um, but in the business world, I guess you got, you know, you got to try and do it before you're forty and get yourself established. Yeah. 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 Oh, very good. Well, Dad, look, I just want to acknowledge you. You know, today, obviously, thanks for your time and coming in and having a chat to me, and um, just for all your achievements that you've achieved along the way. You obviously did it in an era where there was no. Um, I know you're on the Facebook now with your with your your mates on cycling and um, social media and all that. There wasn't anything like that back in the day. I know I've seen a 
couple of articles that you've shown me. But, um, yeah, I just want to say uh, thanks again for coming in. Well done on all those achievements and, um, and, no, and a great I... career. And uh, enjoy, uh, keep on enjoying retirement. Yeah, thanks, Chris. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Good on you, Dad. Thank no you. Worries. Wow, what a um, what a raw episode that was, and a great way to kickstart everything off here with dreams into success. Uh, big thank you to Dad. Um, I just took so much away from that, and yeah, really, really thankful to have him on as our first guest. Thanks again to everyone who joined us today. Um, don't forget to visit my website. That is chrisgoodrope.com. Click on the links. Subscribe to this podcast, Dreams Into Success. We'd love to hear your thoughts um, and reviews. So, yeah, please go visit there. Also, a big thank you to our sponsors today, Rode Microphones, uh, wonderful equipment, the best in the business, and also to Robert Oatley Wines. You need your wines, go see Robert Oatley. And don't forget to follow our Instagram account at Dreams Into Success. All episodes will be up there, all our guests, all information, so don't miss out there. Looking forward to more inspirational stories next time. So get out there, face those fears, and live those dreams. 